Welcome to the crash course in Pythagoras. Uh, let's get started. So Pythagoras is a VS Code extension, or so it can be installed in either VS Code or in Cursor. So what you need to do is just download VS Code or Cursor, go into the extensions um, uh, sidebar button, type in Pythagoras, download it, install it, and it will be right here, this button. So uh, here on the left side, you have Pythagoras Chat. It's basically a chat GPT or GitHub Copilot where you can chat with it, but it has a context over your code base and the project that you're working on. But the main part, the main body of Pythagoras is here on the right side. So I'll just go ahead and start it up. Click Create New App. First thing it will ask me, what kind of technologies do I want to use? I'll click Node.js, project name, crash course. Do I want to use Git? I want to use Git, I encourage everyone to use it. And then I need to describe what kind of an app I want to build. So this is the initial prompt. What I'll do for this prompt, I will just uh, copy and paste my prompt. Uh, there will be a lot of descriptions, a lot of uh, details about this in the description. So check it out. We have a lot of materials on how to write prompts. But basically what I usually do, first I explain the business logic and then I explain, go through all of the pages that I want to have and explain each of them one by one. So this here will be building applicant tracking system. So I'll just click send. I will say yes. If you want like simple projects, then you can click no, but usually I, I, I want to have authentication. And now it will start building the front end. So Pythagoras might take, you know, a couple of minutes, maybe five, if you have an extremely complex project, maybe 10 minutes to build the front end. Then we're going to test the front end. And then after that, we'll go on to building the back end. So I'll come back in a few minutes once this is done. All right, so at this point, the first iteration of frontend is done. It's built by Pythagora. So what we need to do is we need to test out all the features uh, to see how it looks. But remember, at this point, the backend is not connected. So basically, you will be looking at all the fake data. This, this is called mocked data, just so we can test out all the features. And once we iron out all the details, we will tell Pythagora, hey, let's build a backend. So what I'll do, I'll just add any kind of data here. I'll sign in. It will always work because this is mock data. And I need to review all of the, the things on the page. So I'll click just all the buttons. For example, this page uh, is blank. And if I edit the page is blank. So that's completely fine. So sometimes uh, AI just makes mistakes. So I'll need to fix these two pages. Delete button. That's fine. It works. Create new job post. I'll just click around. All that is fine. I can uh, choose files, go to the phases. I can add questions I can delete questions. So basically, this is how you need to approach. You just need to click around uh, all of the different different things and see if everything is working like you want. For example, here I can score. Oh, it's automatically updated. All right, that's fine. Phase two. What I'll also say, yeah, I want um, some data in the phases two through to four so i can see how that looks interview schedule is empty all right so i'll just go ahead and tell all these things to pythagora so this right now it is going to fix all these things and we'll continue the review all right so it's supposed to implement all these pages all right so i can see my job post i can review all of these things all right that's fine I can edit the job post. All right, it's pre-filled. That's also fine. Review applicants. I have applicants in each phase. That's good. I can uh, know that I sent an email. I'll click around. But also what I want to have is I want to have a button to send an email for each applicant. And this is missing. So what I'll just tell Pythagora so what you uh, can look at here is this knowledge base. So knowledge base shows you all of the pages that are implemented, that Pythagoras has implemented. So you can go ahead and before I continue, I'll always look through every single page and just check mark it to make sure that everything is working. And also you can look at API endpoints. API endpoints are basically endpoints on the backend that will be implemented during the backend implementation, but currently the, all, all of them are mocked. And this is very helpful. If you're a developer, you will understand, you know, that all of these uh, are very important and you can always go ahead and open them up on the front end 
so you can actually look at the code base so you can see that for each endpoint Pythagora makes it really nice and re easily readable so for example if you have your own backend you can just uh, stop at front end to make a real API request and that's pretty much it you have all the documentation here the request the response the endpoint and so on so now it has done this review applicants all right so I have a ability to review I can add the score I can add to prove to prove pretty much it what you want to do is you want to be super detailed for example what I would put here I would say like, hey I need some spacing here between video link and this. then we need some spacing here it uh, didn't put the send email but and basically all of these things so once everything is exactly like you want it so we here we have interview schedule I can go ahead and click around maybe I want to have a link to the applicant submissions here I'll, I'll need to add that so basically I want to here iron out all the details but let's say that I'm that I'm done with this and I say okay I'm done building the UI and I'll say yes let's build the backend first thing that backend uh, will, will do is it will ask me for some variables so for example database name and now it goes on to creating the development plan so at this point the development plan is uh, finished and what we want to do is we want to review it and make sure that it's in line uh, with everything that we need so you can click around on this progress tab and here are all the epics that Pythagora has created and in each epic you can see all of the tasks so what I usually look at here is just if I have scripts before I implement all the other functionality just because I want to have something to play around with while everything is being implemented and that's pretty much it so you just review this and once you're done you say like hey I'm done editing the plan looks good and let's continue on so whenever Pythagora starts a new task it will ask you to review it and it will ask you can I implement this task since this is the first task I'll just click yes but usually you want to review it and see if you really want this to happen you can edit it or you can skip a task so sometimes during the debugging process some things get implemented just because you need them to debug other things and at that point if the future task is already implemented you can just skip it and continue on all right so at this point Pythagora has created the breakdown for what is needed to implement this specific task what you want to do is you want to review it and see if this is like you want it or you want to change something and you can always go ahead and chat with it and if I don't like something I can write it here so for example in this case I authentication just needs to be removed it's already implemented and now it will go ahead and iterate on this breakdown and you can chat you can ask it things and chat with it and give it solutions usually for the task breakdown I just continue on because usually it has good understanding of what needs to be implemented when I usually chat with Pythagora is during the debugging process so here I just click yes it looks good and it will continue on into the implementation so right now you're looking at testing instructions so this is a crucial part of Pythagora and what sets it apart from most of the other AI dev tools so what Pythagora does is that it breaks down what needs to be done in a specific task and at the end it tells you how to task that specific task what this is important for is because you want to isolate things and you want to develop step by step so once one specific thing is implemented you want to test only that specific thing and not to worry about anything else that is why Pythagora tells you exactly what needs to be working to mark this task as done so what you need to do is just open up go ahead and go through all of these things uh, and that's what I'm going to do right now so open login page submit login registration submit registration so let's uh, try it out so I'll just go ahead and register login and there it goes and it works now I can click on everything works if there is an error you will click there's an issue explain the issue and if everything is working but you want something different you will click make a change here I'll just click everything works it'll ask me do I want to make a new git commit yes I do you always want to make commits all right so at this point it is asking me to run the script which I already did and to verify if everything is in the data 
What I suggest is that you download MongoDB Compass. This will help you a lot to actually be able to verify if everything is working and it's in the database. So I'll just go ahead and create new connection and I'll put in my database for this project. Uh, it's crash course. So it has seeded the database with this and this is actually the user that we have created during testing. So this is fine. Job post, it has created the job post. So yeah, that's fine. So everything is working. Let's submit. All right, so at this point, uh, I have an error. So what should I do right now? First thing, I should not panic. Errors are completely one normal part of software development. There's literally no software development without bugs and debugging. So what I will do is I will just go ahead and click there is an issue. Here, Pythagora also gives you if an error is detected, it gives you a nice way to just click debug, uh, or you can write it uh, write it down here. So here you can see uh, the logs that are attached. So for example, if there is some kind of connection error or something like that, one of these might be read. And what you want to do at that point is just copy and paste. Here you can see the logs for the back end and the front end. And obviously front end logs you can always see uh, by pressing Command, Option, and I, or just clicking right click and inspect. And you can see in the console tab all the logs from the front end. So what you can do here is if everything is attached, you don't have to copy and paste any logs. So I'll just say. And now Pythagora will go ahead and try to fix the issue. So during the debugging process, what is the best thing to do is actually to check what is the, the problem and what is Pythagora planning to do. So what I usually do is I click here, open logs. You can double click on the, on the tab, it will expand it. And we can see here the error. So job post validation fa failed, the draft is not a, va a valid and a value of the path status. To include the draft as a valid uh, status. And that's completely fine. That's actually what I want. So it will put status, open, close draft. So that's fine. That's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to say, yes, it looks good. But for example, what you want to do is you can say, hey, um, this open and closed is uh, capitalized and draft is uh, not capitalized. So what I'll do is I'll just tell it here. You can ask it questions. You can uh, suggest solutions. So what I'll do here is I'll just say. And now it will reiterate on the breakdown and propose a new solution. This is important because you don't want to go through the whole implementation um, cycle without understanding what is actually happening. So here you can always iterate on the solution, work closely with Pythagora, come to the best solution and let it do the actual implementation. All right, so I'll just review it. So it has open, closed draft, good. It seems to be uh, working well. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. So I say, yes, looks good and let's continue on. So at this point, likely you're seeing uh, this Pythagora is attempting to fix the bug. Pythagora during the debugging cycles has two options. First, it can fix the bug, what is happening right now, or it can add the logs. If a bug is something more complex and it does not understand what is the issue, it might want to add the logs. This is a normal part of software development and this is exactly what Pythagora can do. But at this point, it's attempting to fix the bug. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to just test if the solution is working properly. All right, so right now I need to test. And there we go. Job post was created successfully, and this is exactly what I wanted. You can always, uh, when you get familiarized with Mongo Compass, you can always double check it in the database. And there we go. This is the job post that we created. So that means first, you say, I'm done testing. Yes, the issue is fixed. And right now we just verify if everything is good. I verified it in the database, it's working well. So I'll just click, everything works. All right, so at this point, uh, likely you're in some kind of a more complex bug and Pythagora is not sure what should it be doing. So you will see this Pythagora is adding logs to find a bug. That's completely normal, especially when you have more complex uh, issues. 
just like a real developer, you know, you look at the code base, it looks good. You look at, look at the logs, it looks also good, but there's an issue somewhere. And in order to find it, what we need to do as developers, but also what AI needs to do is put the logs around the code to better understand what is actually happening. And at this point, Pythagora will add the logs around the code base. And what it will tell you, it will tell you what you need to do to test it out. Once you test it out, once you go through all of these things, you just click I'm done with testing. And here you can add more fee uh, feedback if you have any, any other feedback that if something happens differently this time. Or if you don't have any feedback, just click continue without feedback. And it will go through the next cycle of debugging and it will try to fix the issue next uh, in the next cycle. Keep in mind that this process is completely normal. This is what developers go through and this is what AI goes through as well. So don't be discouraged if Pythagora wants to add logs. Just go with it, give it the logs and let it continue on. At this point, everything is working. So all of these steps are fine and I can continue uh, on to the next task. However, I don't like one thing. I would love to be able to click on this title. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll click make a change. This is what you should click if everything is working, but you want something different because what the input that you give here will be saved into your initial prompt so that Pythagora saves that context for later on. So I'll just say, and right now, Pythagora will first update the initial prompt. Then it will ask me to review it and uh, to approve it or not. All right, so right now Pythagora uh, gives me an overview over what it has changed. So I can see the change here. So what I'll do is I'll just click yes, accept the changes, and now it will go on to the implementation. I'm going to wrap up the crash course here. I hope you liked it. Let us know if you have any questions, uh, suggestions, and obviously when you build something, let us know. We'd be very happy to hear uh, what you come up with. Happy coding. Have a great one.